And thank you, Tim, and thank you for the opportunity to present this company to your investors. You know, ResApp is a company that I helped create some six years ago, and we did so because we knew that digital healthcare was going to be the fastest growth in healthcare and the fastest growth in medicine across the board. And we've seen telehealth being massively adopted, largely due to COVID in recent times. And we've also signed up a number of very significant licensing agreements with telehealth companies just in the last few weeks. So we've really turned the corner in terms of commercialization. For me, it's all very much about adoption. We want to see doctors using this technology in the field. And also that we're going to develop the world's first screening test for COVID-19 using only a smartphone. And there are tremendous commercial opportunities that come from that. Uh, let's skip to the next couple of slides. Thanks. So um, we actually have um, three key products that we're commercializing. ResApp DX, which is we're using in telehealth. And this is the ability to actually diagnose respiratory disease using only a smartphone and something that a doctor can't do uh, in a telehealth setting. They don't have access to a stethoscope. So we have the ability to be able to provide that diagnosis remotely to those doctors. And we've already signed up some, some very significant partners in getting that uh, technology being adopted worldwide. Um, <clears throat> ResApp C, uh, cough counting is uh, another thing that came out of ResApp DX, the ability to actually listen to coughs aside from all the other background noises that are going on. So we developed that technology and saw another application. And we've got AstraZeneca partnered with us using that in some clinical trials that they're doing in Japan. So that's an exciting growth space for us as well. Um, sleep check is something that I'm pretty excited about as well, because again, it's another abject from, from coughing, it's actually snoring, and the ability to actually put a smartphone on your bedside table and be able to have it listen to you overnight and be able to screen for sleep apnea, which is a massive market opportunity. I'll go into these things in more detail as we, as we proceed. Next slide. So we are the leader in audio-based diagnosis of respiratory health. We're using machine learning algorithms that have been trained over thousands and thousands of patients and clinical studies that we've done in Australia and the United States. Um, it's, a, it's a very exciting technology. Um, we've proven it through those clinical trials. We've already got regulatory approvals as well. And, and um, we're moving forward in terms of commercialization of that. Next. This is a very large addressable market in telehealth. I mean, respiratory disease is the most common reason why anyone would go to see the doctor. Um, sleep apnea is obviously a large market as well. Eight out of 10 people who actually have sleep apnea don't actually know they have it, even though three in 10 men actually have it, and almost two in 10 women. So there's a huge addressable market as well. And we also have the opportunity through pandemics. I mean, we all know about the Spanish flu in 1918 and COVID now today. Um, these are huge, tremendous opportunities for us to commercialise our unique technology. And I'll get into later on as to why we are unique in our ability to actually um, create a screening test for COVID. Next. So this is a huge market in telehealth. Um, the, the number of patients that are using telehealth in 2019 um, has, uh, was only 11%, but now it's actually growing tremendously. We don't actually have the latest stats, so I can't tell you exactly how many, but we know from the news flow that telehealth is where it's at these days. It also reduces the cost of healthcare because of the cost savings associated with it. And we're also getting insurance companies that are largely the ones that are paying for this healthcare service, particularly in the United States, and they're also incorporating that as part of their reimbursement model. Next. COVID-19 has accelerated that. That's what's pushing people towards telehealth. You don't want to necessarily sit in a waiting room with other sick people. Um, this has uh, resulted in these telehealth companies, be it Ping An or even uh, Medgate in, you know, in, in, in Europe. Um, this is all that's what's driving people to wanting to go and use telehealth more. And we've very much been part of that with the licensing deals that we've been signing up in recent weeks and the licensing deals that we have to come before the end of the year. Next. Um, there's a challenge, obviously, I mentioned earlier about the lack of having a stethoscope in a consultation, clearly having a smartphone, being able to cough into it uh, remotely gives that, those doctors that unique ability to be able to diagnose a respiratory disease, be it a lower respiratory tract infection like pneumonia, bronchitis, asthma and so forth, or perhaps just an upper respiratory tract infection like a common cold. It's an important distinction tool and we'll be able to tell that doctor, even in a remote setting, that 
that uh, you know you need to go and, and and have further tests or we just think it's minor and you need to get some bed rest but if it gets any worse please let us know next so we win in tele telehealth because we are unique um, we're the only company in the world that has that ability to diagnose respiratory disease using a smartphone and it's algorithms that pick out signatures and the sounds of those coughs and those algorithms have been trained over thousands and thousands of patients and it's accurate and that's the reason why we receive regulatory approval in both Europe and Australia um, no one else has been able to do that and if you go through the next few slides you can see how it works you cough three or five times next and you can put in some basic details and any doctor would be able to ask you in any, in any case and it does have a factor in that algorithm and then any recent symptoms that you have and then next you actually get the diagnosis. And that is tremendous to think that you can do all that simply from coughing at a smartphone and providing that diagnosis. Now we're only approved for doctors to use it at this point in time, but we are looking at some point to be able to go into a consumer model. And we're partnering with various companies to drive that adoption. And adoption is where very much where it's at. We need doctors to be able to have access to the technology and to use it in a real world setting. And we signed up all these various telehealth companies, both in Australia and also in Europe. Medgate being a very significant influencer globally. They're the largest telehealth player in Europe. And I'm also very excited about Allo Doctor. I mean, they're the largest telehealth company in Indonesia. There's thousands of doctors that will be using this technology and accessing millions and millions of patients. Alara Health is a major player in, in the African market. So this is all about generating lots and lots of usage. And I might add lots and lots of data. And that data may well be very, very important to big companies like Apple Health, Google Health, Samsung Health. These are all big divisions within these monster companies. That data is the key. And this is where they'll be interested in commercialising our technology in a consumer model um, that I think is very much in the future for ResAp. Going forward, next. Um, COVID-19 is a tremendous opportunity and we are uniquely positioned to do that. I know there are other companies around the world that are, and even organisations like MIT have been making a lot of noise about being able to, to uh, develop a screening test using a smartphone, but they've got a big problem. They're using crowdsourcing to source costs from people who would say that they've got COVID, they're setting in their costs and they're trying to train their algorithms on something that's completely rubbish. And you can't do that. You need a proper clinical trial in order to get regulatory approval and actually train your algorithms correctly in order to actually determine that exact signature that says that's COVID. And only ResAp can do that. No other company has ever taken signatures in the sound of a cough to diagnose anything and receive regulatory approval other than us. So we're uniquely positioned to be able to, to uh, take that. And we will do that in the next quarter. Uh, this quarter, we're expecting to be able to have some news flow in respect to the uh, screening test for COVID-19. And not only that, we can also manage costs in terms of COVID. So actually the progression of the disease going from the lungs and into more severe cases like pneumonia or bronchitis. And I might add that ResApp has a database that we've collected of thousands and thousands of patients who've actually got pneumonia, asthma, bronchitis, bronchiolitis in kids. We can actually screen those out. So just so that your screening test doesn't just say if you've got bronchitis, that actually that comes up as COVID. We can rule that out because we know what a bronchitis cough signature is versus a COVID-19 cost. So it's very important for accuracy that you can be able to use the technology that we uniquely have and that database that we can utilise to develop that world's first screening test for COVID. And the commercial opportunities for that are absolutely enormous, both for, for consumers and, and businesses and governments alike. Next. Cough counting is a near-term revenue driver for us. We partnered with AstraZeneca. They very much like this technology they're using in their clinical trials. This is a very much an opportunity that we've grabbed um, based on the unique aspect of our technology. Next. Um, sleep check, I'll just flip through these quickly, but sleep check, as I mentioned, you just put the phone on your bedside table, you snore away if you're a snorer, and it will actually tell you that whether or not you've got sleep, check, uh, sleep apnea um, compared to a polysomography test, which involves you know, 30 wires connected to you in a sleep in a hospital with a 
a tube stuck up your nose and so forth. This is an incredible device and it provides us the opportunity, um, next slide, to, to, uh, to actually um, partner potentially with the ResMeds or the Philips of the world that makes um, CPAP machines. We're actually selling this product on the uh, app stores and, and uh, you can see compared to this lady, we're all strapped up compared to the next slide. Um, that's sorry, this is our, our, our strategy for growing sleep checks. So we're actually going to increase our downloads through continued uh, social media and expand its availability. We're applying for an FDA um, uh, application to be approved. This will be hopefully our first FDA approval for our technology. So uh, that's actually in trade and it's going to be submitted uh, very shortly this quarter. Next. So the near-term growth drivers for us, you know, sleep check, uh, the FDA submission is going to be one that's going to be hotly watched by the market. I'm very confident that we'll get approval there. Um, we've also um, developing handheld devices, particularly for in-hospital usage. Um, in terms of COVID, we announced an Indian partnership. So this is where we're going to get all those Delta strains, particularly. Um, that's going to be key to fast-tracking the recruitment for COVID. And also in terms of a US study where we've actually expanded that trial for longitudinal data, which is all about being able to see the progression of COVID into different, uh, different illnesses like pneumonia and bronchitis, as in fact it, it spreads throughout the lungs. Our Medgate deal is tremendous. Uh, LA Doctor as well, Doctors on Demand, we've also announced in Australia. So these are new telehealth deals, and we will be announcing new telehealth partnerships by between now and the end of the year. So there's going to be some more deals, which is going to certainly go towards that adoption model. Um, we've got near-term revenue from cough counting and obviously the sleep check uh, licensing opportunities and revenue generation from that. Next. So we've got a strong foundation for success. We're leaders in this space. There are certainly huge markets that need to be uh, addressed from our technology. And uh, we're backed by clinical evidence and we've got a great team within the company based in Brisbane. They've got tremendous experience in this space. And I've no doubt that we're going to continue to sign up new telehealth licensing deals. They're gonna generate lots of money down the, down the line for us as well. And also in terms of the COVID-19 screening test, which I think is probably the most uh, tremendous opportunity the company has and uniquely positioned to do that. Next. So this is the company. Um, we've got a relatively no market cap at the moment, but a strong cash position, a great team, and we're really poised for success. And I know that we've got tremendous news coming between now and the end of this calendar year. And uh, thank you very much for the for listening to me, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Brian. Um, quite a few questions here. With, with the Medgate license, which is live, is there any uh, sort of indication of revenues in the short term that um, you, there's a read there? So there is, because we're going to get, we are going to get, we are getting five to ten dollars per cough. What Medgate need to do is propagate this throughout their entire network. Right now, it's relatively small within Medgate. That's growing. So it's all about their doctors using it, becoming familiar with it. We're already in the door. Um, as they expand over time, this will generate tremendous amounts of money. I'm very confident of that. And, and is that a SaaS-based subscription model or is it a per-use model? How, how, how is it actually priced in terms of doctors <laughs> using the app? Well, it's not a per-use model, but we're giving them latitude to grow it within their network. So, um, so there is a time period that they have where they, they can use it uh, relatively cheaply. And I'm sure that as the doctors see the value of being able to remotely diagnose patients, that that will then grow and uh, will, will generate lots of money probably going into the next year, I would say. And, and there's questions on US FDA approval and obviously you have approval in, in Europe. Can you talk about the different markets and, and your focus? Obviously, there seems to be more of a focus on Europe than the US at the moment? Well, I mean, I guess the focus on Europe is because we actually have regulatory approval in Europe through the CE mark. So we need to focus on the markets where we're actually commercially available. Um, the FDA obviously is a tremendously big market for us, but I think that the COVID is gonna be the way that we'll get into the US first. Um, this development of the screening test is all about actually getting confirmed COVID-19 costs, which is not easy. Imagine the health safety work at the uh, problems associated with collecting costs from people who are positive to COVID. So collecting those costs is a problem, but our partnership with Phosphorus is addressing that. 
Um, there's lots of COVID over in the United States. Obviously, there's a lot in India as well. And I think that when we make our submission um, on the back of successfully identifying that COVID-19 cough instantly on a smartphone and getting regulatory approval for that, that will then open up the door for us to get ResAP DX approved in the US. And, and also in the meantime, we also have the sleep check application, which is already going to be submitted very shortly. And I'm confident that that will get approval. So with the, the COVID application is the anticipation because there is such a need that that sort of uh, approval might be fast tracked? Um, well, there is a, a situation in the US where they've actually got some Congress um, approval process for anything to do with COVID. So there is a fast track process with COVID over there. In terms of our technology, firstly, we need to identify the signature in a COVID-19 test. And that's what the US phosphorus and the Indian study is designed to collect positive COVID cases. So we can actually source that algorithm and then we can go and test that algorithm in a, in, a, in a wider setting to demonstrate its success and being able to do that. And I think once we've announced to the market that we've actually got that signature that we can then go and test it in a wider sense, that's gonna create a lot of interest, not only amongst investors, but also potential uh, partners and big companies, uh, largely US based, and being able to take it into the US market because no other company in the world is doing anything even closely remotely um, as capable of what we're doing.